Now, something I really enjoy doing is watching movies and shows at home. However, to get the best experience, you ideally want a projector that can project a big screen either onto a wall or onto a projector screen. Now, up until now, I've been using a 1080p screen, and whereas it is quite clear, it's nothing compared to a 4K screen. And to my surprise, a company actually reached out to ask if I wanted to review their 4K projector. That company is QBeamer, and the projector is the A80 model that just got funded on Kickstarter. Now, I've been using this projector for probably over a month now, and while it surprised me in many ways, it's actually opened up a lot of questions which I don't even know the answer to, even after asking QBeamer themselves. So in this video, we'll go through the good, the bad, and the confusing. If it's your first time here, thanks for joining the channel, and consider liking the video down below if you like it, and subscribing if you want to see more content. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for returning, and let's get started and review the QBeamer A80. So taking a look at the front of the projector, you can see it says Smart Projection Technology 1080p FHD, which in my understanding, it means full HD, whereas I was under the impression it was a 4K projector. So I did email the company and ask them what's going on, and they have assured me it is 4K resolution. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm not that much of a numbers person. I don't really care that much about numbers. I'm more focused on how it looks when I turn it on, and do I think that it's a clear image. And for the past week, like I said, the image has been crispy clear, and I'll show you that in examples. Also on Android TV, when you turn it on, it does give you the notification to say resolution is set to 2060p. And I have yet to see how it is on the PS5 because PS5 also tells you the resolution in the top right hand corner. So when we turn that on, we'll take a look at what that says as well. So for the time being, I've turned off all of the lights in the room. We still have some light coming from the windows on the side, so it's not completely dark in here, but Turning the projector on with the remote, you can see you get a very large image. Now this image is probably, I'd say three meters when it comes to the width and about two meters high. So very, very big image, too big for the wall I've got there. And I'm gonna actually show you how easy it is to adjust the image to be in between these two doors, which is what I've exactly done for my viewing experience. So we're gonna wait for it to boot up and then once it boots up, you should see in the top right hand corner, it's gonna give us the resolution it's currently running at. So it should boot straight into Netflix, I think, or just Android TV. I think it's gonna boot straight into Android TV. Up there, we've got Android TV 2060p UHD. So we do have that very high resolution image. As you can see, the image quality is quite good. And then we've got the Android TV operating system quite smooth to be honest I think this system has a 2 gigabyte RAM 16 gigabyte storage on it so Android TV runs perfectly fine and you actually get Netflix on the actual projector which is quite rare because some projectors I've seen out there they don't come with Netflix for whatever reason so what I'm doing currently on the remote is I'm pressing the settings button so now we're in the settings you can see we've got projection settings network settings Bluetooth other settings so you can connect to your Wi-Fi networks Bluetooth settings, connect devices like speakers, etc. if you want different kind of audio environment. For me, I'm just using the speakers built into the actual projector, which are pretty decent. It's supposed to be some 3D sound, and I haven't got any complaints, to be honest. It provides good enough sound for me in terms of a uh, cinema feeling. Obviously, if you have speakers in front of you as well from a sound bar, you'll get a more advanced uh, listening experience. And then we've got stuff like projection settings, which you do have all the fancy features like autofocus and then auto keystone. Now, auto keystone is supposed to align it to the wall and have it, no matter what kind of direction you've got the projector in, it will give you a straight image. I've obviously got my projector straight onto the image, so I don't really need to use that. But what I do need to do is I need to zoom out so I can place the image in between the two doors and then I'll go on corner correction and I will just literally just drag each corner to how I want it. And I love this aspect because I can adjust the image exactly how I want it and have it perfectly within the two doors on the wall. So there we go. And that took me what about two seconds to get that done. Then you have keystone correction as well. So as well as the automatic settings, you do have manual ones you can also do yourself. And like I mentioned before, I think focus settings, you've got autofocus, 
However, on your remote, you also have focus in and out buttons as well. So it is all digital in terms of you don't have to actually touch the projector once you're using it. And the remote is Bluetooth as well. So you don't have to be chasing an IR uh, receiver on the back of the remote. Then we've got network settings, of course, connect to your Wi-Fi. So when it comes to Netflix, you get the full fledged 4K visual experience. So what I've got here, I've got a 4K 60 FPS HDR video. It's the traditional Costa Rica video that always gets shown on these when you want to display 4K image quality. And if we go into the settings of the video, we can see that it is actually set to 2060p, 60 frames per second HDR footage. And you might, I'm not sure if you can see on the screen, but from what I'm looking at here, the image quality is super crisp. The lights are actually turned off. So I'm gonna turn on lights right in front of the screen. So you can still see the image, obviously the quality is not optimal now because you've got lights right in front of the screen. But if I turn them lights off and I just turn lights on from back here, you can see that I've got lights on in the apartment and I can still fully watch the content that's on the actual uh, wall. And if you have them, I'm not sure what they're called, but they're projector screens that give you a better contrast and clarity of the video, I'm sure that you'll get even better uh, quality when the lights are on. With the lights off, the image quality is insane. And then we've got this projector button, which takes you to, to the actual kind of media center of the projector, where you can do Android mirroring, iOS Wi-Fi mirroring, and iOS AP mirroring. So you can even, using your iPhone or your Android device, you can mirror the screen onto the projector. And then we've got like Bluetooth speaker settings, signal source, the projector specs and settings. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm actually gonna turn the PlayStation on and we'll see what kind of quality we get with the PlayStation on. And I'll take you up here and we can see what the actual PlayStation says in terms of resolution. This is the first time I've even booted up the PlayStation onto the so PlayStation 2060p UHD. You can see 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. I'm gonna run some different games. So this is the first time I've actually booted a game onto it. And I, well, the main thing I wanna see is if there is any input lag when it comes to playing games and what you see on the screen. So let's take a look. But gaming is definitely possible. Just I wouldn't expect the exact same results you get from a TV. Obviously this is Fortnite, so if you were to play some driving games, I don't know whether that would impact anything. So now that I've got Modern Warfare up on the actual projector, there is a lot of this artifacting going on, which I'm not sure what's going on. I don't get that when I play on the TV. And also I can say that both Fortnite and Modern Warfare, there is a noticeable... Uh, controller delay so when you move it does take a millisecond or two to for the actual character to move and to be honest it i would say it is playable but i think you'll get very annoyed if you lose because uh, the controller didn't do what you wanted it to do very quickly so i want to try rocket league to see if it makes any difference with these driving games which rocket league is the only driving game i have at the minute so I personally don't think I'll be playing any games on this projector just because I find, at least for me, that slight bit of input lag is uh, just ruins the game for me. I just, I feel like I'm kind of lagging in the game and I'm not a fan of that kind of feeling. So here are some more 4K video examples I'm showing you on screen. Now, something to keep in mind is that although my wall is white, it's not completely smooth. It does have some slight textures to it. Whether or not this makes a big difference in the viewing quality, I'm not exactly sure. Um, in conclusion, the projector gives a very clear and crisp image. Whether or not it's true 4K, I don't know yet until I review some other 4K projectors to compare it to. I really like these projectors with the built-in Android system as it just saves you from having to mess around looking for a Fire Stick or Android TV stick to plug in. Also having that customizable image keystone and focus settings straight from the remote just makes for an all round more convenient experience. Now the projector is great for watching movies and shows but playing games is something I definitely won't be doing on it as the input lag is just way too obvious for me uh, to be able to enjoy the game I'm playing. And for the price of I think thousand dollars or thousand euros they're asking for, I would say it's quite pricey for what you're getting so if you enjoyed this video, it would be a great help if you could press that like button.
consider subscribing for more content like this in the future and as always have a great day and i'll catch you on the next one